Welcome to another H3 educational healing event. My name is Jernia Piazzetta, and I am the founder and director of H3 Health Hope Healing, a nonprofit breast cancer organization with its focus on awareness, education, and prevention. I am very happy for the opportunity to be here today with all of you via Zoom and honored to have Dr. Jenny Gallipo to teach the Healing Herbs class. I would like to thank the Miami Beach Chamber and its staff for hosting our event today and for the support. Guys, you rock. Thank you. As you may know, H3 relies on the community support. Therefore, if you like the event, please support our work in our community by donating. Without further ado, I introduce you to Dr. Janet Gallipo. Janina, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. I really very much appreciate it. And as you know, uh, H3 is an organization that is very close to my heart, um, in part because it began where I live in, in Miami Beach. And it was a very uh, grassroots organization being able to work directly with uh, clients, with patients who have just been diagnosed with breast cancer and are really looking at being able to integrate uh, conventional approaches to breast cancer with alternative um, and holistic approaches. So um, I'm very happy Janina and I have known each other a long time. We've worked together for many, many years. I think it's 15 years now at least. And, um, and it's wonderful that we can come together once again and to have this event. So I think most of you know me um, either through uh, H3 or through other um, online trainings. But for those of you who don't know me, uh, I am a doctor of oriental medicine. So that means um, acupuncture, Chinese herbs, Western herbs, different associated holistic therapies, um, including uh, homeopathy and crystal therapy and nutritional therapy, many, many things, lots of tools in my tool bag, depending on what's needed. Um, but, but, but the main thing that I do now is a, a holistic energy-based therapy called body intuitive. Um, and my background is in the body talk system and some of you uh, no body talk. So a body intuitive is an intuitive medical system, and it gives us the ability to work energetically to balance people's bodies, and then to add in other things as needed, including healing herbs. So today we're going to be talking about uh, 21 simples. And I have to tell you that this is what started me as a therapist. So more than 35 years ago, I was living in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and I began to train with some uh, herbalists who were part of something called the American Herbalist Guild, which is a very uh, prestigious American herb uh, organization with very, very knowledgeable herbalists, including people like Rosemary Gladstar and Susan Weed and, and David Winston um, and, and many others. And these are people who are extremely knowledgeable in Western herbs, uh, sometimes in, in Chinese and Ayurvedic herbs as well, and is really have really devoted their life to working with herbs, including the concept of simples. So the concept of simples, you'll see uh, this lecture is called 21 Simple Herbs. So the concept of simples really has to do with the idea that one plant can do many, many things. And if it's a well-chosen plant, it can actually heal many systems of the body, many um, organ systems, uh, blood systems, energy-based systems, muscle systems, meridian systems, nervous systems, immune systems, endocrine systems. So, uh, you know, regardless of what uh, your approach is to uh, understanding healing and the different interconnected systems of the body, the idea here is that one simple herb can go into every corner of the body and, and create healing no matter what is wrong. So although we're gonna be going through the 21 herbs and we're gonna be talking about, okay, you know, this herb is good for this and this herb is good for this. The idea is that each of the 21 is pretty much good for everything. 
And, um, and so it's really a pleasure to introduce the herbs to you to know that they're very safe to work with. Many times, um, I, I think for the most part, all of them can be ordered, ordered on Amazon. Um, and also uh, after the lecture um, between today and tomorrow, I'm gonna send to uh, Charlotte and also to Janina, a list of where these herbs can be ordered. And, um, and, and they can be ordered either as tinctures, you know, herbs that have been extracted um, and, and created, uh, made into a liquid uh, extract, or they can be ordered as a tea. And, and we'll give you the source of being able to order uh, either the tinctures or the teas on all 21 herbs. And we want you to have fun with them, to be able to work with them and to really enjoy um, becoming uh, an herbalist with what we, what we call a kitchen practice. Yeah, so that's how I started as I got very interested. And then basically I bought some bottles of herbs and I put them on a shelf in my kitchen. And then people would come to the kitchen door and say, oh, I have a headache. And I look, well, this, I think let's try this little bottle. And uh, then they'd come back in a few days. Oh, that really helped my headache. And I told my friend about you. And then the friend would come and say, oh, I have a constipation now. Oh, okay, let's see. Oh, let's try this little bottle. And it's fun to experiment and they're safe. And then you begin your, um, your path of being able to use the herbs for yourself, your family, and your friends. So as we say, um, what are simples? Simples are concentrated plant tonics or teas, um, and they are made of a single herb. Um, and the idea is that this herb is processed either through an extraction process, kind of a hydraulic extra extraction process, or in the form of a tea, can be brewed over a period of hours to extract the maximum amount of vitamins, minerals and what we call constituents in the herb. So they are concentrated forms of plant medicine. We know that plants have been used medicinally for hundreds of years. And we also know that worldwide, there are so many different plant species. And as it says here, 35,000 to 70,000 plant species have been screened for their medicinal you. So this is in every country of the world. Every country has, you know, its plants that are known for working well medicinally. So probably in the U.S., uh, we have uh, uh, one of our main ones that everyone's heard of is, is echinacea, for example, that grows here. Um, but in all countries of the world, they have their, their favorite plants, you know, in Brazil and, and in Asia and in, uh, you know, uh, cold weather climes, you know, in Canada and in uh, Europe, et cetera. And so uh, many, many plant species have been discovered and then have been screened and have been categorized for medicinal use. So this has been going on for many, many, many years. So just a few uh, statistics, um, I think this has come from World Health Organization. So over 80% of the total population in the developing world is on some kind of natural product. And this is true because of tradition and because of what we call um, a time-tested uh, safety. Also, you may not know this, but up to 50% of approved drugs during the last 30 years, so here we're talking about our pharmaceuticals, are either directly or indirectly derived from natural herbal products. So as we mentioned, there are different herbal systems worldwide. So of course, uh, the uh, Chinese herbal system is uh, one of the oldest um, and it's been around for many thousands of years and has used herbs successfully, um, mostly in combinations for many thousands of years. Our Western herbal system um, derives from a uh, European, actually from English uh, herbal system, working with single herbs, um, and also from uh, Native American plants in the United States. 
Uh, Ayurvedic herbs, of course, derive from the Ayurvedic system, which is um, mostly based in India, but also uh, connected to other Asian regions, including Nepal and other regions. It is also a very old system of using herbal medicine um, with great uh, success. And then we have a Tibetan herbs, Tibetan herbal system, which is a separate from a Chinese and also from Ayurvedic and has elements of both of them there, but also um, has to do with a high altitude herb. So the Tibetan herbs, because the Tibetan Black Plateau is mostly above uh, 10 or you know, 12, 13,000 feet, then most of the herbs that are there are, are rare herbs, um, very effective that are grown at high altitudes. And lots of times now um, with the kind of Western um, uh, uh, process of producing what we call nutraceuticals, they're actually combining these different herbs in uh, different kinds of medicinal doses. So as we talk about the 21 herbal simples, they're mostly Western herbs. So they're mostly herbs that are grown in this country, different areas of the United States and or Canada. And there's a few little Chinese herbs. And I think there's one um, Ayurvedic herb in here. So we try to, what I tried to do is really make a list of the general adaptogenic herbs, the most popular ones, the ones that are readily available and are considered very safe and it can be found in most health food stores. And then we're going to talk about the quality of these herbs. Okay, so uh, we're going to um, begin. And um, as Janina said, if you have a question while we're going through, please feel free to chat it in. And then at the end, I will be looking at the questions. Lots of times uh, there are some um, similarities in questions and then, uh, and then answering uh, as many as I have time for. So number one, um, we have the herb uh, astragalus. So um, many, you, many of you have probably heard about astragalus. Um, it is a, um, it's a very important herb for the immune system. And I would say that astragalus is the number one herb to be taking to strengthen your immune system. Here we're calling the immune system a whole combination of things, not only the Western herbal understanding of the immune system, which includes, of course, innate immune cells and adaptogenic, uh, excuse me, um, innate immune cells and um, acquired uh, immune cells. Um, but also, um, it also includes the Chinese definition of the immune system, which has to do with um, your body's energies on the surface and inside. So astragalus is a, a root that actually goes into the surface level immune system, as well as the kind of protective immune system um, of the organs and of the, including the white blood cells. And it has lots of amazing uh, constituents, including things like polysaccharides and flavonoids, which are basic constituents of foods and plants. Also, they find lots of trace minerals, also uh, lots of vitamins, et cetera. So this is what astragalus looks like if you are uh, just working with slices of the root. And some people really like to do the Chinese root preparation of astragalus. Now, um, it's easy to get it in a capsule form, powdered or extract for an easy use. So what does astragalus do? Well, it supports deep immune system function. If it's possible, if you could, if anybody could just check your mute button to make sure that you're muted. Thank you so much. So uh, astragalus uh, supports the deep immune function. Um, it promotes uh, normal levels of specific immune cells, including uh, T cells, right? So the, uh, um, the acquired immune system, it's known for working um, with um, uh, all sorts of immune immunodeficiency um, illnesses. 
Um, and it seems to be very effective when immune function is stressed by outside influences. So environmental pollution, um, you know, uh, breathing in contaminated air or drinking contaminated water or things coming in from the outside. It also can protect against what we call endogenous challenges, things that are naturally occurring within the body um, as a result of, uh, you know, hereditary factors or, um, you know, other uh, things that come up in the mind-body relationship. So astragalus is really known as being an immune system herb that treats both. The one thing I want to mention about astragalus is that each of these herbs has a direction, right? So we ingest it, but then the quality of the herb is that it goes up, it goes down, it goes into certain systems like the digestive system or the kidneys like that. So with astragalus, um, basically we're talking about the direction going up. So that is why it is so good to take astragalus if you feel that you're coming down with something because it has a particular relationship with the um, upper respiratory system, the throat, um, and this whole area, uh, the, 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 the upper part of the uh, respiratory system, also the thymus, also the sinuses, the nose, all of this. So, um, because it goes up, if you take too much, it actually can cause a headache. Um, but that's the worst side effect that you'll get. And so what we want to do is just make sure that we're taking um, the appropriate amount so that it is working um, in a positive way with your immunity. So what I've done for each of these herbs is I've put down some of its common uses. And you can see, you're gonna see each one of them has so many common uses because being in the uh, what we call adaptogenic or tonic herb category, as I mentioned in the beginning, means that they can go to so many different places in the body. So astragalus is great for the endocrine system, including adrenal function. Of course, works with the immune system, works great with liver function, um, helps with stress, and then anything having to do with common cold, upper respiratory infections, it should be a, the herb of first choice. But it also has some amazing other qualities. It protects against heart disease. It is considered an anti-aging herb. And I want to say that all of these 21 herbs are considered anti-aging. Why is that? Because they have so many healthy constituents in them that they rejuvenate the inside of the body, thereby rejuvenating the physical appearance. Um, all of them, almost all of them have anti-inflammatory qualities, including astragalus. And astragalus also gives an energy boost. It reduces fatigue and it is a specific herb that can help to treat diabetes. Okay, going to number two, nettle leaf. Some of you grow in a, uh, live in areas where nettle grows, so that's usually northern climates. Um, and, and nettles likes a lot of water. Um, so they like to grow like close to uh, ponds and uh, little lakes and, and streams and, and bodies of water. They call it stinging nettles um, because uh, there is a, a stinging uh, quality to the plant that is protective of the plant. Uh, so as a result, uh, you have to know how to pick it. Um, so yes, the botanical name is Urtica urticodiaca. And um, nettles is one of my very, very favorite adaptogenic herbs because it treats so many different things in the body. It is amazing. Um, as it says here, a common use is a great stabilizer to treat allergies or any kind of reaction that's uh, happening in the body. And um, it's easy to go to the health food store, find a standardized extract of nettles. Um, it can be also the plant, um, uh, the, the dried uh, herbal plant can also be made as a, as a decoction, um, a drunk as a tea. And lots of times they put nettles um, leaf, also nettle root, because this is a part of the plant where almost all parts of the plant can be used, the root, the leaf and the seed. Um, and they incorporate it a lot of times into paste, creams, and salves because of its amazing soothing anti-inflammatory qualities. 
Yeah, so as it says here, um, it reduces inflammation. It is a specific herb that treats prostate issues. And also for some reason, nettles is able to treat um, premature balding and also it will turn white hair dark again. Yes, and if you if you brew the um, herb, it's a very very dark uh, green water. Um, so uh, yeah, so so it's great as a uh, hair treatment. Um, and as it says here, a solution of the extract may be applied to the skin. It will relieve joint and muscle pain. And if you look at some of the natural creams and remedies that are out there, you might find that there is a nettles there. So uses, Alzheimer's, you think, wow, what is that about? Well, nettles treat the kidneys. And in Chinese medicine, the kidneys and the brain have a very close association. So uh, nettles will treat any kind of kidney problems, kidney stones, polycystic uh, kidneys, um, also will treat areas that are associated with the kidneys in Chinese medicine that includes the genitals, prostate, um, et cetera. Um, so you can see here lots and lots of things, uh, bladder infections. Uh, also, uh, because uh, nettles does have a relationship uh, also to the upper respiratory system, it will treat things like asthma and um, bronchitis, especially when it's kind of settled in and it's long-term. Um, so lots of things here, uh, nettles will treat hives um, and will treat any kind of sudden allergic reaction uh, that you experience. We'll also treat um, sciatica, tendinitis. We even have things like multiple sclerosis here, again, because of the relationship between nettles, the kidneys and the uh, brain or nervous system. Yeah. So um, just a quick uh, story about nettles. Uh, lots of times if I get a client uh, into the office, into the clinic that has so many complex things that are going on, it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on. We want to unscramble the body. And lots of times, one of the best ways to unscramble is to put people on one of these symbols for one to two months. And nettles is one of my favorites. And so I've gotten, you know, lots of clients in and they've had like, you know, so much work, you know, so much, you know, pharmaceuticals, so many interventions. Maybe they've had lots of other kinds of work, acupuncture, energy work, everything is just a whole mishmash in there and everything has to be unscrambled. And so these 21 symbols are great for that. Um, and nettles is one of them. And I put people on nettles, you know, leaf or root remedy for one to two months. And I've said to them, don't do anything. Just take this nettles tincture twice a day for a couple of months and everything is going to be unscrambled in the body. And then sure enough, at the end of that time, they're generally feeling better. And then I can actually see, okay, now what's come to the surface, right? Everything's been unscrambled. So now what do we really have to address? Okay. All right. Number three, eleuthero, eleuthero ginseng. Yeah. So Siberian ginseng is a kind of ginseng, um, but it's not the Panex ginseng, the Chinese ginseng that we usually associated with ginseng, although it's a ginseng because it has similar qualities, but it's called Eleuthero ginseng. It's also called Siberian ginseng. It is grown in cold regions around the world. And as it says here, constituents over a hundred. Most of these simple herbs have over a hundred constituents. And that is why they are good for so many different things, right? They have uh, so many um, uh, stabilizers uh, to the body contained in each one. So as it says here, uh, Eleuthero ginseng has also been used in China for thousands of years as a folk remedy, it is considered um, an adaptogenic herb that works with the immune system. And so that's why we have here that it's really good for the respiratory tract infections as well as for colds and flu. Um, it is very similar to regular ginseng um, and also to an herb called gynostema, which is a very uh, important uh, adaptogenic herb also because it has a lot of eleutherocytes in it. And these are the qualities that go into the body to really work with um, the different uh, organ systems and the blood system. 
So look at all these uses. Wow, right? Uh, each one of these herbs, so many different things. Um, so uh, this herb, uh, as an adaptogenic herb, really um, helps to increase energy and endurance. Yes. And so uh, for people who are depleted, uh, feeling, uh, you know, deficient, this is a wonderful choice. And it's a great choice over the traditional Panax ginseng because it's not as hot in nature. It is a cooler quality herb. So as a result, you know, you can take it for a long period of time. It won't overheat the body. So yeah, so fatigue, exhaustion, mental fog, lack of vital energy, you know, all of these things uh, really respond very well to uh, the Eleuthero uh, uh, ginseng. Yeah, approves ability to absorb and use oxygen. Wow, that's pretty important these days, right? Um, it's also used for things like insomnia, for low back pain, and for what we call a, a deficiency of kidney yang. So kidney yang is one of your vital energy systems. Uh, within the body, within the kidney system, and a very important system um, to have this strong because it's an energy source for the whole body. Um, uh, improves lack of appetite, enhances, enhances uh, resistance to stress, and it actually has neuroprotective effects against cancer. So, so many good um, qualities um, in this herb. Okay, number four, Shizandra, berries. Yes, so uh, it's called Wuetsa, literally five flavor berry in Chinese medicine. Again, one of my very favorite herbs, Shizandra is amazing. It goes into every single main organ system of the body, right? All of the yin organs. It goes to the heart, it goes to the lungs, it goes to the liver, it goes to the spleen, and it goes to the kidneys. And it has many uh, constituents, over a um, hundred, um, and is considered one of the great adaptogenic herbs. Um, so it can be taken as a tea, capsule or tincture. Yeah, so what do adaptogenic herbs do? Again, they provide powerful antioxidant protection from free radicals, from environmental toxins. And this particular herbs has a remarkable blend of flavors, five distinct flavors, which include the sour flavor that goes to the liver, the bitter flavor, which goes to the heart, the sweet flavor, which goes to the spleen, the pungent or spicy flavor, which goes to the lungs and the salty flavor, which goes to the kidneys, which correspond to the five elements in Chinese medicine. So this is a great herb to quickly balance your five elements. Yes, and many other uses, liver protection. Again, adaptogenic herbs, they increase endurance, they increase stamina, they combat fatigue. So when you're feeling like you're running on empty, like you have just totally spent yourself, you know, you've been too busy, you've gotten so stressed, these herbs will really help to support um, your energy system. Great for respiratory health. Um, also helps to reduce stress, probably because of its relationship to the liver and will give the immune system a boost. So as it says here, it supports cardiovascular function, digestive function, and endocrine function, the main systems of the body. Okay, going to number five, burdock. Yeah, some of you may know burdock root, the article, um, because burdock uh, many times is uh, a recommended herb for cancer um, because of its blood cleansing properties. So it's interesting to think about how they think about cancer according to a Chinese medicine, which basically uh, has to do with impurities within the blood system. And so burdock uh, root is one of these roots that goes in and keeps removing impurities from the blood. Yeah, blood cleansing and also skin healing properties. Yeah, so lots of vitamins in burdock, 
um, folic acid, uh, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin E, uh, vitamin C, uh, vitamin D, lots and lots of uh, vitamins, also lots of uh, trace minerals, iron, uh, manganese, magnesium, et cetera, et cetera. So a blood purifier and also slightly diuretic, meaning that it will help to expel toxic products, toxins within the blood through the kidney and urinary bladder system. So burdock is a bitter, yes. Um, and bitter uh, roots have an important role um, in tonic herbalism. They clear impurities. So this herb will also treat skin problems, things like eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis. Um, and uh, the plant has also been used as an herbal remedy for liver and gallbladder complaints, because as we know, bitter roots go to the liver and gallbladder system. Yes, um, burdock seeds have also been used for throats, for chest, um, leaves and stems can be used uh, for other things, including increasing appetite and addressing the digestive system. Yeah, as it says, it's good for gas and indigestion. So you can see, you know, each one of these plants has so many different uses. And the idea in, in tonic herbalism, uh, especially if we look at its European roots, was that you would have one or two of these plants growing in your yard. And then you would go, you know, to the yard and you would, you know, pick your burdock and you would dry it and you would be able to use all parts of the plant for the health needs of your family. Okay, number six, licorice. I love licorice, one of my favorite herbs. Of course, they're, they're all my favorites, but <laughs> I love licorice. Um, licorice is a, what we call a sweet herb in Chinese medicine, licorice root. Um, no, it's not the, the, the licorice candy that you eat uh, that won't replace the licorice root, although that might have a little bit of the, of the, uh, the licorice flavoring in there. Um, and it's known as something called a yin tonic. What is a yin tonic? Yin has to do with fluids in the body, the deep fluids that line the joints and the viscera and keep everything nice and juicy in there. Also the deep fluids that help your, your, your brain and your endocrine system to work, help to produce things like cerebral spinal fluid. Um, so the, you know, yin tonics, herbs that are that are juicy and, repl and and what we call demulcent and really replace sort of lost fluids in the body are a very important category of herbs in Chinese medicine. Yeah. So we've all heard of quercetin. So lot, there are lots of, um, uh, you know, pills, quercetin pills uh, in the health food store. And um, uh, quercetin has been uh, studied for um, its many uh, great uses, including uh, working with the immune system and also replenishing fluids in the body. Um, and licorice root is rich in this. So, you know, we, we uh, prefer in herbalism to try to get our vitamins and our um, our supplements directly from the plant because the plant has so many uh, good qualities that are interrelating uh, to support the, um, the action of the plant rather than you know extracting a single component. Anyway, as it says here, um, licorice root is recognized as one of 50 fundamental herbs. So it binds, synthesizes, and protects the digestive system from harsh components in any formula. So you'll find that in almost every single Chinese medicine formula, you'll see that there is a small uh, amount of licorice root. It is a specific for the lungs. It does work on respiratory issues. It does work on cough, et cetera, because of this demulsion quality. It goes in, it lines the whole uh, respiratory system, the throat, the, 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 the trachea, the cough, you know, in case of, you know, dry cough and all this stress on the uh, res respiratory system and lungs, which really dry out the tissues, it'll help to nicely uh, replace some moisture there. Yeah, as it says here, as an herbal medicine, licorice root is probably one of the most overlooked of all herbal wonders because you're able to do so much with it. And it really goes into every part of the body, I believe, including all 12 meridians. Okay, look at this. 
incredible, right? So, I mean, we've seen now the, the, the list of uses and, you know, from top to bottom, you know, it just, you know, everything from asthma to arthritis to colds and flus, even HIV, immune system problems, gout, Lyme's disease, psoriasis, yeast infections, tuberculosis, right? Then the prostate, so many different areas of the body that a licorice a root can go to. So it's a wonderful adaptogenic herb. Okay, number seven, we have red clover. So uh, most of us are familiar with red clover, the trifolium, uh, beautiful flowers. Um, I'm in uh, Asheville right now and uh, red clover is growing uh, naturally everywhere uh, in Asheville and we're harvesting it both for medicinal purposes to make tea with and also because it looks so beautiful in our flower vases, um, beautiful red and purple flowers. And um, it's, it's a wonderful herb. Again, um, basically, this is the main herb in uh, the anti-cancer formula that's called the Hoxie formula. Some of you um, may be familiar with that. And so the Hoxie formula is an adaptogenic herbal formula, very, very safe, um, non-toxic formula that basically treats um, you know, any kind of, of cancer, what we consider to be blood impurities. Um, and so red clover is a great source of removing impurities from the blood, a great source of many valuable nutrients um, and a source of uh, isoflavonoids, um, et cetera. Okay, can I ask you please everybody to check your, um, your, uh, your audio and make sure that it's muted. Thank you so much. Yeah, so here's a list of, of red clover impurities from the blood, it, it actually, according to um, Western herbalism, rids the body of cancer cells. Um, it's very good uh, as an anticoagulant, it prevents blood clots. It also treats um, women's issues, hot flashes, PMS, and it's very good for breast health. Okay, going to number nine, uh, Rishi, Rishi fungus comes from uh, the Rishi or the Ganoderma uh, fungus or mushrooms. Um, so uh, we know that mushrooms are a very rich source of uh, constituents that work with the immune system. Um, this is a great immune system uh, regulator. It's non-toxic uh, um, and it's very, very safe. Um, it's also considered a kind of superfood. It has life extending uh, properties. Again, uh, being uh, adaptogenic, it, it will treat almost you know, any disease. It's also very, very good to prevent disease and to promote longevity. Um, they have done lots of studies that show that reishi fungus, reishi mushroom seems to have some uh, qualities that help to uh, treat cancer also, um, and also can help to regenerate the liver and to eliminate uh, toxins and uh, reverse um, liver damage. So lots of different um, uses, um, you know, immune system, lots of lung conditions, heart disease, kidney disease, cancer, liver disease, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to tell you a two minute story um, that's just to outline the wonders of uh, working with uh, Rishi. So as you know, most of the uh, way in which we're able to, um, you know, use herbs is, uh, is orally, we have to consume them, right? So we, we take them in a tincture or tea, they go through the uh, digestive system, and then they go to the different parts of the body that need them. Um, however, in this case, uh, reishi, they actually make reishi spore oil. So they extract the constituents of the of reishi fungus, they put it in like little gel caps and the spore oil can be taken internally and can also be taken, can be used on the external of the body, exterior of the body. So one of the things that we uh, work with in energetic medicine and in Chinese medicine is we look at the body, we look at the energy centers of the body, and sometimes we apply herbs directly onto the energy centers. So I've been treating uh, someone who is in a hospital um, and a couple of weeks ago, we thought we were gonna lose him. Um, so he has, um, 
uh, COVID and he's been on a, a ventilator for three weeks and he has ARDS, you know, acute uh, respiratory distress syndrome. And, you know, he was requiring 75% oxygen and prone position and blah, blah, anyway, not looking good. And so I am trying to rack my brains, trying to think, okay, what can we do for this person in the ICU? Like what will the nurses maybe be willing to help with? And suddenly I thought, I know, I'm gonna send them some Rishi Spore oil and have the nurse open a capsule and put it on just two points on the inside of his ankle. So we arranged with the uh, ICU nurses, they were willing to do this. And so we started, we started doing this, um, I think it's been about a week now. And as soon as we started, his whole health started turning around. It was amazing, yeah. So um, he's weaning off the vent, he's breathing on his own, he's you know, opening his eye, he's coming back basically from what I call death's door. And um, you know, of course, part of it is his own recovery process and the good care he's having in the hospital, but I also believe that part of it has to do with the application of this Rishi Spore oil on a couple of acupoints, which are penetrating into the body and helping to boost his system. Yeah, so that's a great story, right? Okay, moving on to number nine, Hoshu Wu. So some of you know this, um, it has a nickname, Faux Tea. <laughs> right? Some of you knew, and it was like a whole cult about faux tea coming into the country in like the late 1960s. And it was like uh, this incredible adaptogenic herb. And, you know, people be believe that it could reverse the aging process, that it was one of the herbs used by the Chinese immortals. And if you, uh, if you took it, you could live to be 500 years old and, and all of this business. So it is considered uh, a very important herb and tonic herbalism, uh, blood, kidney, and and liver tonic and specifically treats what we call Jing issues. Jing issues equate with the DNA in Chinese medicine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been prized for centuries. It prevents premature aging, uh, enhances longevity and youthfulness, keeps the skin looking beautiful, keeps the hair black, uh, keeps the hair from falling out. Um, and helps with things like a virility, sexual potency, and also produces red blood cells. So this is an herb specifically that we use for anemia. Yeah, so look at all these great uses of the Hoshu root, um, the endocrine glands, uh, you know, anything with blood and the heart, you know, uh, we uh, use for angina, also anything to help to regenerate um, the heart and the cardiovascular system. Um, so many different things, um, you know, <laughs> there's like a list here, ringworm, schizophrenia, epilepsy, impotence. You might be thinking, well, what does one of these things have to do with another? But it's just an illustration of the sort of wide domain of these incredible powerhouse adaptogenic herbs, including um, the, the Hoshi Wu. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, uh, do one more herb dandelion, then we're gonna be about halfway through, then I'm gonna take a couple of questions so I can see that there are some. Dandelion is one of the amazing adaptogenic herbs of the world, of the planet. It grows um, everywhere. It is a specific herb that does go to the liver gallbladder system and totally removes toxins and regenerates the liver. It is a, a bitter, it is categorized as a bitter in Western herbalism. You can even cook with dandelion with the young shoots um, and uh, put it in, in salads. But basically it's an incredible cleansing agent and it moves things in the body. It, it helps with circulation, it removes toxins. It, 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 if you're constipated, it moves the stool through, it helps with water retention, um, et cetera. It's, it's good for acne, right? Complexion, because you know most acne and most skin conditions have to do with a, an inner condition of uh, toxicity in the, um, in the body. Okay, so the scientific name uh, comes from the Greek words for a remedy disorder. The Greeks felt, you know, 2,500 years ago that no matter what ailed you, the dandelion would fix it. Dandelion has been used to treat serious conditions for over a thousand years. It is a very safe tonic herb. 
uh, chock full of vitamins um, and also uh, minerals. Okay, so look at this great list of these herbs. Uh, treats the liver, treats kidney disease, um, treats uh, swelling, skin problems, um, fever, eye problems, et cetera, et cetera. This is also a specific herb to help with the breasts. Yes, dandelion treats tox toxins affecting the breast area and uh, also includes uh, things like uh, mastitis, and also a lack of uh, milk flow uh, in the breast, uh, et cetera. Yeah, it's uh, in, in Chinese medicine, we say that this herb clears heat and detoxifies fire poison, right? So that's just thing that we talk about. Yeah, but this is a specific herb that helps to treat breast cancer. Okay, so I'm gonna pause here. I'm just going to, uh, look quickly at these questions. And as you can see, I like to talk a lot, so we don't have too much time, but let me just see uh, what is happening here. I oh. sent you two questions, Janet. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, I heard uh, licorice is bad for people with high blood pressure. Is that true? If you take too much, if you follow instructions on the bottle or on a cup of tea, no problem whatsoever. When you hear about these things, it's that, you know, people are like abusing them. So they're like, you know, they're taking them times three or times 10. And that's when the problem set in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Amani, thank you so much. Um, uh, Anna's asking uh, which acupoint for the Rishi kidney three right inside of the ankle. Okay. Yes, this meeting will be a scent, so not to worry. Um, is there an herb that will help us to absorb uh, vitamins like vitamin D and folate? Any of them. Any herb will help with that. Yes. All right. And we have Gaia in Asheville talking about how dandelion grows wild here. Yes. Can a woman who is breastfeeding take dandelion? Yes, because it's a plant. It's a vegetable. So yes, you can take it. And no, the, the taste uh, will not uh, come through the, um, you know, in, through the breast milk. All right. Great. Thank you. So let's continue. Number 11, we have ginkgo leaf. So a lot of us have heard about a ginkgo because it is, um, a, again, it goes up to the head and it's a great herb to um, uh, clear uh, obstructions in the brain. It basically treats brain fog by improving circulation in the nervous system. So as you can see here, it's been used for uh, attention deficit disorder um, and brain fog and different kinds of memory uh, issues. And, you know, uh, all of these different like uh, you know, brain tonics and brain formulas and brain vitamins that they have at the health food store, most of them have a ginkgo biloba in them. It also can treat things like a tinnitus, uh, ringing in the ears, um, and asthma and bronchitis. Yeah. Again, like astragalus, it goes up to the head. So if you're ODing on ginkgo, um, you can get a headache for it. So please, if you're taking it as a tea or a tincture, please follow the uh, instructions. Yeah. So um, you probably didn't know that ginkgo is the oldest living species of plant on the earth. It is 225 million years old. And in the U.S., it's been one of the 10 best selling herbs for more than five years because all of us <laughs> are suffering from a little bit of like brain frog and, and brain uh, confusion. Yeah, it's been used in China for a long time um, as an herbal uh, um, tonic uh, herb in uh, Chinese formulas. So look at all these different things. Yeah, so they actually do use uh, ginkgo for Alzheimer's and also for um, you know age-related uh, um, dementia. So it's very good with that. It it uh, it helps with reduced blood flow to the brain by invigorating the blood, helping circulation to the brain, helping with memory loss, um, et cetera. Um, also things like difficulty concentrating, even uh, mood disorders and mood uh, disturbances. 
Um, it do, because it goes to the head and because it clears obstructions in the head, it does help with uh, ear conditions such as hearing disorders or ringing in the ears. And also because of its ability to improve circulation, it helps with things like a Raynaud's syndrome, uh, which is a lack of circulation, uh, usually in the hands and feet, fingers and toes. Um, but also if there's a lack of circulation anywhere in the body, it will help with that. It also treats things like, um, like Lyme's disease um, and depression. Okay, St. John's wort. Um, so this is a beautiful plant uh, that grows um, mostly in the, in the northern part of the United States. Um, it's an incredible adaptogenic herb. I can't say enough about it. One of my first experiences of working with medicinal herbs was 35 years ago, uh, working with uh, David Winston, who owns the uh, Herbalist and uh, Alchemist uh, Company, which is a major uh, company uh, that makes very high quality herbal tinctures uh, in the United States. And uh, David Winston is also one of the past presidents of the, um, the Herbalist Guild. Um, and one of my first experiences was, oh, I, I think we're talking, you know, 30, over 35 years ago, um, I was with him um, as a, you know, person that was just starting to learn about herbs in a beautiful field in an island off the coast of Maine. And we uh, together uh, picked um, baskets and baskets and baskets full of a uh, St. John's wort that he later uh, made into uh, medicine that just treats so many things, the hypericum. Yeah, and hypericum oil, when you crush the flowers of the St. John's wort, the hypericum oil is bright red, although the flowers are uh, yellow. Yeah, so this herb is best known for treating mental and emotional symptoms and stress. It has a very calming influence um, on the central nervous system and can treat depression and also nervous uh, exhaustion. Yeah, so as it says here, the yellow flower releases this blood red juice when it's crushed. And this juice was associated with the blood of St. John the Baptist. So they believe that a St. John's wort was being used actively uh, during uh, that time. It's also known as an amazing wound healer. Yes, and so if you put uh, St. John's wort and they put this in paste and, and salves, things like that, um, on a, a wound, it will speed uh, the healing. Yes, and so doctors acknowledged at the turn of the last century that the plan had undoubted power over the nervous system, used for depression, used for mental illness and other nervous abnormalities. So again, this is uh, commonly sold at the health food store. Um, you'll, you'll see it um, and you know, it's, it's reducing um, nervous anxiety and really working to boost mood and working uh, with the immune system. Has other great um, uh, uh, uses as well. Hypothyroidism, decreases blood pressure, um, food cravings, withdrawals from nicotine and alcohol, um, helps to reduce the risk of AIDS, hepatitis, and other serious viral conditions. How does it do this? By having constituents that work with the um, innate and adaptive immune systems. All right, I love St. John's Wort. Always have a bottle in my house, yeah. I hope that some of you will be inspired after this talk to start your own little uh, kitchen practice, right? So you can either get like a little tiny shelf and, and get the 21 bottles and order all 21 tinctures, or you can get a nice container and order, order the 21 teas and uh, start having some fun with these herbs. Okay, we have Hawthorne, the Cretagia. So uh, some of you know this um, as a blood tonic. This is the best herb to use if there's a heart problem. Um, it, it, any heart problem, uh, you know, working with the uh, coronary arteries, the, art the other arteries of the heart, improving circulation, improve improving the integrity of the heart muscle, improving the whole uh, uh, cardiovascular system, um, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's great, yeah. Um, so all parts of the plant are used, the leaves, the berries, the flowered and the woody part. Um, 
it has been used. Um, it is a, uh, a key um, ingredient in traditional Chinese medicine formulas that are associated with the heart, but also with the spleen, stomach, and liver meridians. It is considered the superior heart tonic by many herbalists. And the great thing about working with uh, the hawthorn is that it's very gentle. It's basically a fruit. And so it has very gentle restorative effects on the heart over time. So if we're giving Hawthorne to somebody that may have some heart issues, we want to tell them you're going to take this for three months. You're going to take this for six months. And then we're going to evaluate and see how you're doing. Yeah, so as it says here, it's used for heart disease, a regular heartbeat, treats um, both high and low blood pressure. You say, well, how can it do both of those things? Because it's a stabilizer of the cardiovascular system. Um, it will treat high cholesterol um, and all these other good things, anti-inflammatory, anxiety, digestive issues, et cetera. So yeah, it's, it's a wonderful herb for that. Okay, so I told you there was going to be an Ayurvedic herb here. And so uh, here we go. And that herb is ashwagandha. Let's talk about ashwagandha. So um, this is the key Ayurvedic adaptogenic herb. It has so many different health benefits. It's also widely used in this country. So it's kind of one of these, you know, um, kind of herbal um, hot shots that, you know, oh, we heard, oh, there's this magical herb, Ayurvedic herb from India, and we want it too. And so uh, ashwagandha is um, used, uh, you know, uh, very widely in the US. Um, and it is a wonderful herb. I'm not saying it's not, it's great. And that's why it's here is one of the 21. But what I do want to say about uh, the ashwagandha is that in my opinion, it's a little bit overused in the US. Um, because it is coming from um, India. And so I really want to encourage you to try some of the adaptogenic herbs that we've already talked about that will have the same qualities as ashwagandha um, and that grow right here in the US because uh, as John Shen said, he's one of the uh, world's uh, you know, most famous Chinese herbalists. Um, he said, if you can use an herb that is grown close to you, that herb will work a hundred thousand times better, <laughs> not a thousand, but a hundred thousand times better than an herb that is coming from um, outside of the area. So it, it is, you know, I always want to support, um, you know, herbs that are grown in North America. But that being said, ashwagandha is a great herb, no question about it. Yeah, so all of these things, anxiety, uh, insomnia, tumors, depression, it can help boost fertility, it can help to uh, stabilize the reproductive system, um, and also uh, works with, um, you know, backache, fibromyalgia, pain, arthritis, etc. So lots of good um, adaptogenic function here. Okay, going to uh, number 15, uh, we have uh, the turmeric, of course, you know, what herbal talk would be complete without uh, talking about the wonders of a turmeric. Um, so we know that turmeric is probably one of the chief anti-inflammatory agents on the planet, right? It's amazing. And um, it cools inflammation anywhere in the body. In Chinese medicine, we say it cools the blood, right? Because lots of times when there's inflammation, where is it? Well, it can be in an organ system, and, but it can also be um, in the blood system of the body. Um, and a turmeric is good for so many things, uh, including asthma and cough. It is a relative of the ginger plant. So that's why we see its beautiful yellow color. It is also considered a digestive system stimulant because the, one of the great qualities of turmeric is it stimulates the body to heal itself. And so we're so familiar now with this plant. It comes in so many different forms. There's teas, there's powders, they put it in smoothies. Uh, in juices, extracts, supplements, essential oils, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Food too. Yeah. And it's important to get a good source of turmeric if you're going to be using it. So all of these great qualities of turmeric, right? Allergies, cancer, anti-inflammatory, helps to control blood sugar, um, improves memory. Uh, it's an anti-aging 
um, uh, anti-aging tonic. Why? Because aging so much has to do with inflammation. And so if we can reduce inflammation in the body, we are slowing down the aging process. Um, it's a natural a painkiller. It promotes longer lifespan. Okay, we have lysine fruit. And some of you know this as goji berries, right? Goji berries. So that's lysium in Chinese medicine. Um, it's very demulcent, meaning that it goes in and just lines the organs and the tissues and replaces lots of the lost uh, fluids and uh, lots of the good, what we call Jinye fluids, all the sticky stuff that's in the body that becomes depleted over time. So it is known as a yin tonic. It nourishes the blood and the yin. Um, and moistens things in the body, including the lungs. Yeah. So uh, goji berries or lysine fruit, it's considered a superfood or a super fruit. There are extremely high concentrations of vitamins, minerals, amino acids, polysaccharides, sterols, micronutrients, phytochemicals, and antioxidants. It's got it all. Um, it's a very important free radical fighter and protects the cells from damage. Yes. And as it says here, polysaccharides, um, of which lithium contains many, really help to boost immune system function. Okay. So look at all these great uses, anti-inflammatory, skin irritation, nosebleeds. Wow. Stabilizes the blood sugar, reduces uh, anxiety and depression, boosts the immune system. So, uh, so much good stuff here. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's lysium, it's so readily available, the goji berries, um, you can buy them and really incorporate them into your diet. All right. Cordyceps. It's a fungi. Um, that has been used for thousands of years in Chinese medicine for health benefits, immune system, and anti-aging properties. Yes. So um, it is considered a superfood. It slows down the aging process, reduces stress, fights infections. It is considered a cancer fighter. So we talked about the um, benefits of the reishi, the Ganoderma as being a cancer fighter. So the cordyceps also being in the fungi family would do similar things. You know, um, it shows that uh, it may block the growth and spread of different types of cancer and also can be helpful in treating side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. Yes restoring the immune system. So again, uh, cancer, anti-aging, also good for asthma, colds and coughs, reproductive health. They have athletic performance here. Really, I would say that any of these uh, 21 adaptogenic herbs, any of the 21 simples can be used for athletic performance because they're boosting the body. They're boosting all the energy systems of the body. So a cordyceps is listed here for that. Um, but I think all of um, them can be used for that purpose. Leaky gut yeah, and Crohn's disease too. Okay, going to uh, American ginseng, um, also a Panex ginseng. Um, it is considered a yin tonic um, and also uh, tonifying the uh, chi of the body, yes. So um, um, the Asian ginseng, as we mentioned, is a little bit hot in nature. And so this is all, this is a little bit cooler, but also a good, <clears throat> excuse me, booster for the immune systems. And lots of times, if you're taking a general immune system tonic, you will see American ginseng in that tonic. So all of these different um, qualities and functions, boosting the immune system, boosting energy, treating cold and flu, um, digestion, gastritis, reducing stress, lowering blood sugar, you know, all of this good stuff. Okay, valerian. So I included valerian here because, you know, people have lots of sleep uh, issues. Um, and this is one herb that is really pretty safe to take when there are sleep issues. Um, 
uh, you know, regardless of where they're coming from. There are lots of different reasons why people have sleep issues, but regardless of what that is, it does have sedative effects and it does have anti-anxiety um, properties. It is considered a very safe herb. So side effects from valerian are rare. So uh, it is a sleep aid. Uh, it also treats anxiety, lowers, lowers blood pressure. It can uh, reduce pain in the body, including easing menstrual cramps. It, it, it helps to reduce uh, stress and anxiety. Um, and you know any kind of uh, uh, a pain condition, including muscle spasms. It's a relaxant, yeah, and, um, and a sleep aid. Okay, we have Romania, um, number 20. So some of you are familiar with Romania. Um, this is a, a, an herb that is um, native to China, um, but it's such an important herb for the kidneys um, and to balance the yin in the body. And, and it's such an important restorative herb in the aging process that um, I did put it in here because it can be used by itself as an adaptogenic herb. So it, as I mentioned, it's a renowned a kidney tonic. It has been used for thousands of years in China to promote longevity and rejuvenation and also to regenerate the kidneys. So people who have you know, kidney damage, you know, polycystic kidneys, slow functioning kidneys, kidney damage from diabetes, kidney anything, you know, kidney cancer. Um, it's a wonderful herb to restore kidney function. It is also considered a premium blood tonic and will benefit sexual functioning in both men and women. Why? Because in Chinese medicine, sexual functioning is directly related to the kidney system. Yes. Also, it's considered an herb that will improve stress, resilience, and mood by working with the body's um, antioxidant defense system. So look at all of these great qualities, supports um, bone health, supports brain health, supports heart health, supports healthy skin, supports kidney health, supports adrenal health. So uh, and nervous system health. So it just, you know, Romania is amazing. Yes. And then on the, on the right side, allergies, anemia, constipation, diabetes, even fevers, eczema, high blood pressure, et cetera, et cetera. An amazing adaptogenic, adaptogenic herb. Yes. Okay, number 21. There's number 21 and then there's a bonus. Um, white atracolode. So this is another Chinese herb um, that can be used as a simple, as a single that I've included here for a specific reason, uh, Baiju. Um, so this uh, herb supports, it's, it's an energy tonic. It supports the digestive system and also the water element but it's the, one of the most commonly used herbs in Chinese medicine, because anything going on with the digestive system, it will strengthen. And because so many of us now have some kind of digestive system issue, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, you know uh, acid reflux or hiatal hernia or pain in the stomach or bloating after eating or, you know, problems with food absorption you know, et cetera, et cetera, so many different issues. So this is the one herb, the white atracolodes baiju that will treat any of these issues. It's such a gentle harmonizing herb for the whole digestive system. As it says here, a fundamental formula for stomach and spleen chi and deficiency. Also, it will help to strengthen one's immunity, reduce stress and calm emotions. Okay, so that is our, um, our 21. Um, and now um, we have one bonus. And so uh, the bonus is um, rhubarb. <laughs> it's funny, rhubarb has always been one of my favorite herbs. Um, but it isn't something that is so uh, widely used here. Although, of course, we grow uh, rhubarb, we eat rhubarb. Um, but then, you know, in my reading about how um, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic was handled in China and in Wuhan and the things that they did, you know, that we didn't do that really cleaned things up uh, very quickly there. Um, what I read and this really, uh, you know, struck me is that rhubarb was used by itself 
in the hospitals in Wuhan during the pandemic, the initial pandemic to reduce mortality. And they found that if we, they gave people rhubarb tea, they were able to save a lot of lives because it has such powerful anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial and antiviral properties. So rhubarb is known as a purgative herb. And what that means is that if you take too much, you're gonna get diarrhea because this herb drains downward. It takes all of this heat and accumulation and excess and stagnation in the body and it just drains it down through the intestines. So it is cold in nature. So it's great to eliminate heat, inflammation, fever from uh, the body. It also stops bleeding and it also can be used to treat things like constipation, di diarrhea, heartburn, you know, and just general inflammation. So, so I put that bonus herb uh, in there for you and you can eat your rhubarb. Uh, one of my favorites is strawberry rhubarb pie. So that's one way that you can have it. Or if you want a more um, kind of uh, medicinal um, dosage, then you can buy um, a rhubarb tincture. So that is our 21 uh, herbs plus our bonus. And so um, I'm very uh, happy that we got to uh, go through these uh, today. So now I'm gonna answer some Q and A um, and then we will uh, wrap up here. So, okay, so let's just go to the top. Um, yes, so I did answer the question about the vitamin D and folate, any of the herbs, because each one of these 21 herbs contains over a hundred constituents, including vitamin D and folate, the actual herbs contain them, um, but any one of them will help, help absorbability of those herbs. So yes. Okay. Okay. And a great, I'm, I'm glad you want to start the herbal kitchen. I think it's awesome. Okay. There we go. Okay. So let's take a look at the, uh, at the chat here and let's take a look at these questions. Is it okay to use many different herbs at the same time? So the thing is that um, I prepared this lecture so that people felt comfortable using one herb at a time, not so they could make a whole like witch's brew, right? And if you use this herb as a single, um, it will work wonders for you. And if you start using a witch's brew of a lot of different herbs, we don't really know how the one herb is going to process through somebody's body. So what I recommend, and uh, we'll, we'll have some, I'll have some uh, follow-up to this. I'm actually putting together another, another herb uh, lecture net right now. But what I recommend is that you use an adaptogenic herb, one herb for a week, if you want to start with this. So pick any one, pick one that your body just like the sound of, take that herb for a week, two to three times, or if it's a cup of tea, one to two cups of tea, or if it's a tincture, you know, a couple times a day and see how you feel for that week. Hmm, I noticed I'm sleeping better. I have better energy. Wow. I think that a Siberian ginseng is really doing something. Then week two, switch to a different bottle. Okay, I'm gonna try the nettle leaf this week. Oh, I tried the nettle leaf. I noticed I don't have as much hair falling out of my head. I feel like my sinus is cleared. My skin looks better. Awesome. Okay, now it's the third week. I'm gonna try the Hoshu Wu. So that is how we like to use the simple herbs. Okay, yes. So most of the tinctures do have alcohol in them. If you want to take them, but you have an alcohol, um, you know, allergy or sensitivity, here's what you do. You boil a little bit of water and then you take the boiled water, like just, you know, like this much little tiny, like an ounce of boiled water and you put it in a cup. Then you drop the tincture in and within five minutes, all the alcohol evaporates and then you can drink the herb. Yes, if you have an alcohol sensitivity, yes. Where can we find information about medicinal plants in South Florida? Very good question. There are medicinal plants in South Florida. 
Um, not as many um, as grow in areas that have a more diverse growing season. But one of the great medicinal adaptogenic plants in South Florida is the saw palmetto, right? So that's like this kind of like cacti plant and the saw palmetto um, root and berries is in my opinion, you know, pretty much of a, almost a cure for prostate cancer kidney problems, kidney stones, it is amazing. So definitely um, I, 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 uh, I recommend um, that as a, as a native Florida plant. I so, have a question, uh, yes. turmeric, I love turmeric, but I keep reading online that turmeric is bad for the liver. I don't believe so, but I wanna no. see you. No, what's happened a lot of times when people start using um, the, the, the turmeric is that everybody is ODing on it. And so of course, everything has to be processed by the liver. And so then the turmeric is having an effect on the liver because the liver is being forced to process large amounts of it. That is why we advocate what we call tonic doses, tonic doses, small doses taken over a long period of time. And so this, these is, these means the doses are safe and that they will slowly make changes in the body. I guess I would say that's the big difference between taking herbs in this way and also, and then taking a pharmaceutical. So if we take a pharmaceutical drug, we expect pretty quick action. It's like, okay, we're not feeling well, we're going to take a painkiller, or we're going to take anti-anxiety, you know, or we're going to take a, you know, whatever. And we expect that within a few days, we're going to be feeling better. But these herbs don't necessarily work like that, because they're food based, they're plant based, they're gentle. And they're part of, of, of this, you know, sort of adaptogenic, uh, an adaptogenic herbal program they're taken slowly over a period of time. And then suddenly in a month, people say, wait a second, I think I feel better. Or in six weeks or in two months or in six months. You know, I always say, if you take adaptogenic herbs for six months, you go through a rotation. Oh, I'll take this one for two weeks. I'm gonna switch another one for two weeks. Then I'm gonna switch for another one. I will guarantee you, you will be a new person. Yes, because these herbs are able to address so many different things. So, so usually when there's, we say, oh, you know, turmeric's having an effect on the liver or, you know, ginkgo's having an effect on, you know, uh, the cardiovascular system or whatever it is, it's because people are overdosing. They're ODing on the herbs. They're taking too much. So that's what we say, reduce the dose, take a safe tonic dose of the herbs and that will really help you. There is another question about the liver and milk thistle. Milk thistle is great for the liver. I could have put it in the, in the 21, but the only reason why I didn't is because all of the 21 go to multiple parts of the body. And milk thistle is really known specifically as being a great herb for the liver and gallbladder system. So I think milk thistle is great. Again, safe tonic dose over a period of time. One of the alternatives to milk thistle is another thistle called blessed thistle, and blessed thistle also has an amazing adaptogenic effect on the liver gallbladder system. So the body gets tired sometimes of the same old thing all the time. So if you have a liver issue and you've been taking milk thistle for a month, switch to blessed thistle. You know, it's a different thistle, has slightly different qualities. You can kind of switch back and forth. So it's, so it's great also. So I'm just gonna go back to um, two concluding slides that I have. Here we go health, hope, and healing. So everybody who's online, listen up. This course that you just had, which I have been so delighted to share with you, costs $100, yes. So uh, last year I taught this course to many people and they paid $100 for it and they enjoyed it. And this year when I spoke with uh, Janina and, and she said, people are really interested in herbs. I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna offer the whole uh, uh, 21 Simples Herbs course, you know, cause it's a really great way to get people started. I wanna remind you though, that H3 is the sponsor of this and they run entirely by donations. And the donations have been, <laughs> have been a trickle. 
Yes. So I really want to encourage you, keeping in mind that this course costs $100, to please make a donation today to H3. It doesn't have to be $100, but if this course had value for you, please make a donation. Um, I'll be very happy, and so will Janina, and so will all uh, the uh, folks associated with H3. So some of you know, some of you don't know that um, I work with a partner, Dr. Laura Stuve. She's a PhD in molecular biology, and she and I are co-teaching a class this Friday um, from two to five called Elemental Reset. So for those of you who are interested in learning a little bit more about your Chinese medicine points and how to be your own healer on a daily basis, please tune in to um, Elemental Reset. Uh, it's from two to five on Friday. And um, yeah, and it's also uh, not only um, a way to kind of address imbalance energetically on a daily basis, but it'll give you some good clues um, about where to put some of these external application herbs. So again, thank you so much. Thank you to the chamber also for uh, hosting this. Um, I really uh, appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, share with everyone out there. So thank you so much to the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce. Uh, thank you to H3. Janina is always a wonderful thank you, Jenna. Thank of you. everyone who, who, who is in need of healing. I mean, Janina really um, will go the extra mile for anyone who is in need. Um, and I, I, I admire so you know, that's so much about her, such a, such a giving person as such an altruistic person. And so um, thank you so much, Janina, for inviting me today. Thank you so much again. Wonderful to see everybody's faces and have a beautiful rest of your day.